بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا وعبد القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى آل الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في العربي اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الماء وأخرجني لنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا الخزراء ونعوذك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين This is the third session in which we discuss Ensaf or fairness as one of the most fundamental values in Islamic moral system. And again, this session would be short because we spent some time on discussion. What I want to share with you today is to look at the issue of insaf from an opposite side. In other words, let us see when someone is not fair, when someone is not monsef, what he does. What is the root of not being fair? This is called in Arabic, Hamidia and Asabiya. Hamidia and Asabiya. Hamidia means bias. Asabiya means bias, which is quite opposite to himself. Both Hamidia and Asabiya means bias. Mahmiya means bias. What does Asabiya mean? Asabiya, the same. Yes. So, I have few hadith for you from Al Kafi, volume 2, page 308. Maybe some of the hadith is one page before or after, but it's about page 308. And then one hadith from Nahjul Balaq. The late Kulaini has a chapter called Babul Asabiya. This chapter is about Asabiya, about bias. The first hadith is from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. The second hadith is from Imam Sadiq quoting Rasulullah. So maybe they are the same. Because Imam Sadiq also quotes from Rasulullah. Man ta'assaba aw tu'assiba lah faqad khala'a ribq al-iman min unuqih. Yesterday, we had a discussion uh, about extremism and sectarianism, and I mentioned this. If someone is biased, or to if someone allows people to have bias about him in his favor, for example, I see my, for example, people say our alim is the best alim. Knowing that I'm not the best alim, mm -hmm. but I keep silent. This is also a problem. Mm -hmm. Those people have problem why they are making their alim the greatest, while he is not. That alim also has problem because he is allowing people. There is a story that once two people were debating from two different mosques. 
One was saying that our alim is better. The other one was saying our alim is better. One of them was saying our alim has more knowledge. He says, no, our alim has more knowledge. <laughs> so then one of them said, are you listening? Mm -hmm. So one of them said, your own alim admits that our alim is more knowledgeable yeah. than him. Yeah. Then he said, he is stupid, he doesn't understand. He is more knowledgeable than your alim. So this is ta'assub. He is not promoting that alim for the sake of the knowledge of that alim or even for the sake of that alim. He wants to promote himself. It's our alim, because this belongs to me. Yeah? My alim is better than you. Anything that belongs to me is better than anything that belongs to you. This is ta'assub. If ulama also approve this ta'assub, you know, if I have a group of followers that they say, Sheikh Shumali is the best alim in the world and I approve that, it means that I have also problem. Okay? I should say, why you think like this? You are making mistake. <coughs> so, man ta'assaba those who have bias or those for whom bias is expressed and developed okay so people have a bias in favor of them he has removed we had the Rebbe in Baba Hadi Ash. You remember? Faqad kharaja min Rebqatil Iman. Rebqa is like a rope. Like a rope that can be tied around the neck. Okay? So Iman is like a rope around our neck that keeps us connected. If someone is biased or for whom biasness is uh, exercised and he doesn't mind, he has removed the rope or the tie of Iman from his neck. It means that he has separated himself from Iman. He has lost Iman. He's not in the group of Mu'mini. Yes. So you see, the issue is very fundamental. To be Muslim is easy, but if you have ta'assub, if you have bias, you are not mu'min. Maybe you are Muslim, okay. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But to be mu'min means you have to be committed to the truth, not committed to your own interests and ego. In another hadith, is hadith number three. And Abi Abdullah alayhi salam qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, man kana fi qalbihi, is worrying. Man kana fi qalbihi, habbatun, من خردل من عصبية. Whoever has a very small particle of خردل mustard, yeah. Yes, Imam Sadiq quotes from Prophet. You know, خردل is mustard, yeah. Very little particle, like a, even dust. Of Asabiya. If there's Asabiya there. Ba'athahullahu yawm al qiyamah. Allah will resurrect him on the day of judgment. Ma'a a'rab al jahiliya. He will be resurrected with the Bedouins of the time of ignorance. 
Quran says about those Arab. Arab is different from Arab. Arab means Arab people. Rasulullah himself was Arab. Arab is different from Arab. Arab are those Bedouins at that time. Bedouins today can be good Bedouins, but at that time we refer to the Bedouins who lacked knowledge and understanding and suffered from many moral issues. Yeah? Quran says, Al Arabu Ashatu Kufra. They were very stubborn, insistent on their false ideas and practices. Okay? Al Arab. Uh, Rasulullah says if someone has very little amount of asabiyya, he would be resurrected with those people. Now you can imagine many Muslims can be resurrected with those Arab, those Bedouins, because asabiyya is there. So I, I mentioned hadith number seven for one reason, then I go back to hadith number six. So Ali ibn al Husayn alayhi salam an al Asabiyya. Imam Zayn al Abidin alayhi salam was asked about Asabiyya by us. Fakala al Asabiyya to Leti. يَأْثَمُ عَلَيْهَا صَاحِبُهَا Sometimes, you know, people wonder, does Asabiyya include, for example, the love that you have for your family, your friends, your tribe, or your, I don't know, fellow citizens? Is this also Asabiyya? If I love my brother, my sister, my fellow Muslim brothers and sisters, is this Asabiyya or this is different from Asabiyya? Imam Sajjad explains. That bias, which is considered as a sin, is this. An yara rajulu shirara qawmihi khayran min khiyar qawmin akharin. Asabiyya is sinful, is immoral, when you consider bad people from your group better than good people from another group. For example, you are from city A and there is competition between city A and city B. Then you prefer bad people of your town to good people of that town. For example, imagine there are two cities and they have to have one member in the parliament. Sometimes this happens, yeah? So imagine, for example, two cities have one member in the parliament. If the people in the city vote for someone, not because he is better, just because he belongs to their city. And then a more qualified person who belongs to another uh, city doesn't get voted. This is Asabiyya. Yeah? But if I love my city, I love my people, that's okay. But when you are giving more significance to your people than giving to the truth, to the values, to the virtues. You are discriminating against people. This is bad. So, the bias which involves sin is to see bad people of your group better than good people of another group with whom you have a kind of rivalry or competition. وَلَيْسَ مِنَ الْعَصَبِيَّ أَنْ يُحِبَّ الرَّجُلُ قَوْمَهُ It's not bad. It's not bias to love your people. وَلَكِنْ مِنَ الْعَصَبِيَّ 
But bias is an yu'ina qawmahu ala dhulm. If you love your people, it's not bad. But if you help your people to do zol to other people, this is bias. You understand? So, I can be, for example, loving Muslims. No problem, I love Muslims. But if I don't see negative things that Muslims do, and whenever there is a case between Muslim and non-Muslims, I always take the side of Muslims just because they are Muslim. Or if I help Muslims to do zul, this is asabiyya. Or with the Shia, I love Shia, okay, very good. But if I prefer a bad Shia to a good non-Shia, mm -hmm. or I help a Shia who is doing zul, because it's just Shia and I'm Shia, this is not good. Because for us, the main thing is justice, the main thing is truth, the main thing is pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want to just support someone because he is closer to me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that you have be witnesses over truth, even if it is against yourself. It's not easy. <coughs> Quranic verse in Surah Al-Fatr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the companion of the Holy Prophet that they are Ruhimah Bainahumah wa Shibda Al Kufar. How would be that? No problem. Ruhimah Bainahum, they love each other. It's good. For example, you love your children, it's good. But if your child beats someone else's child and you support your child, this is bad. Because I love my children, so when, whatever they do, I support them. This is bad. Maybe your child is misbehaving. You know, sometimes people, for example, parents, <coughs> when they hear there was a fight in the school, without you know bothering to find out what was the case, they go to the school and complain. Maybe your child was responsible. Maybe he was the troublemaker. But people cannot imagine that their child might be troublemaker because then it means that I am also part of it. It's impossible that someone who belongs to me makes a mistake. Yeah, they cannot unfortunately see our problems. Sometimes we like uh, it's not in deals, but it's like uh, don't, uh, don't want to see the truth, they want to be blind for the, the truth. That they yes, so this bias doesn't let you see the truth. So this is ta'asso, this is asabiyya. Yes. So what you're saying is actually love can create self-love. Not just, if your child is part of you, so you If it is not, it. if it is not a genuine love, if it is not educated love, this is emotional love, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I wanted to say... And you know, sometimes, I told you last week, the same child that you always support him when he has problem with other people, but if he has problem with you, <laughs> then you are not biased for him, you are biased against him. <laughs> so, this shows that I am only thinking about myself. <laughs> between my child and someone else, I take his side, but between him and me, I take my side. My, my thoughts went on to the Prophet Ibrahim yes. and his love for his child, which was Ismail. Yes. Um, when Allah tested him uh, by telling him to sacrifice his child, was there any form of asabiyya there? Was that why he was tested? No. Why asabiyya? Bias towards the child. I'm talking a, high, a different level of asabiyya. 
actually that was a, a sign of him having no asabiyah because although he loved mm -hmm. his child, mm -hmm. but he was ready to give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his child. Mm -hmm. There was no attachment in the sense that makes you not able to see what Allah wants, what is the truth. He had no asabiyah. Yes. Yeah. The prophet that came into the Bible, somebody asked him, um, and they used it. Uh -huh. Was there a bias in No. Mm. Yusuf was really good. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was not that Yusuf was equal to other people or worse than other children, and then still he loved him more or preferred him. Mm -hmm. He was especially, mm -hmm. uh, you know, gifted with some qualities or had some virtues. And that was the reason. Could you please explain this uh, diet that he was quoting? Does it, if it, if it for if you, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to understand your point. Yes, yes, yes. If you say that it's a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sometimes maybe you are standing against someone, mm -hmm. not because of asabiyah, because that person is doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. So if someone is doing wrong and he is related to me or not related to me, I should be able to face him in different ways, to speak to him, you know, whatever. There are different levels of, you know, amr maruf what is important is that you don't treat with favor people who are related to you and without favor the people who are not related to you. This is not justified. Yes. In the same chapter in Surah Kafi, Hadith number 5, where is it from Imam Ali ibn Hussain, it says, Lam yudkhil al-janna hamiyatu ghayr hamiyatu hamzat ibn abid. Yes, I will come to that, inshallah. So, if someone loves his people, it's okay. Okay? But if he considers a person who is belonging to his group, mm -hmm. Just because he belongs to the group that he belongs to, better than more virtuous people from another group is bad. Or help a person from his group to do zulm to other people, this is bad. The next hadith is hadith number five. Again from Ali ibn al Hussein alayhi salam. Which says, Lam yudkhil al jannata hamiyatun ghayr hamiyat hamzat ibn Abdul Muttalib. Hamiya. Imam Zain al Abidin al Islam. Hamiya means kind of attachment. Maybe. Here it's not good to say bias. Mm -hmm. Attachment in a general way, because it can be good attachment or bad attachment. Mm -hmm. Attachment or having a special regard would not take you to heaven. Mm -hmm. Would not take anyone to heaven. Except the Hamiya that Hamza <coughs> had for Rasulullah. When Hamza saw Rasulullah was misbehaved, for example, they put the stomach of camel or whatever on the head of Rasulullah because of his love for Rasulullah, he was angry with those people. Okay? This Hamiya is not a bad Hamiya. Because Rasulullah was mazloom. Yeah? 
It was not that Rasulullah was Nauzu Billah Zalim and he had Hamiya for him. No. Rasulullah was Mazlum. <coughs> Hamiya for your nephew when he is Mazlum is a good Hamiya. If you don't have this Hamiya, it means that you are not a human being. Because it's Mazlum and also related to you. If someone is not showing any concern for a Mazlum who is related to him. So, this type of love, this type of concern for a person who belongs to your family or group is not a bad one, it's a good one. As we said, the criteria is whether you give more weight to the justice and truth or to your relations and attachments. Yes. So here, why then Imam al-Islam considered that the other Hamiya with Hamiya, Hamza, Abdul Muttalib, what's the connection in between these so, two Hamiya? So it is to show that Hamiya is very <coughs> negative, except such cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes to highlight that how something is very generally negative, you can say this is bad except this. So you bring something very exceptional, it means that everything else can be bad. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Hadith number six. Now we are going to the root. And then you can see fairness and bias, how they are connected to something very fundamental. Imam Sadiq salam says, Inna al-malaika kanu yahsaboon anna iblis minhum. Angels had the impression that Satan is one of them. Because angels were not suspicious, yeah? When they used to see a bliss around, mm -hmm. they thought he's one of them, mm -hmm. okay? وَكَانَ فِي عِلْمِ اللَّهِ أَنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْهُ But Allah knew that he is not one of them. So the angels were not aware of impurity of Iblis. But Allah was aware of the impurity. But that impurity was hidden. Maybe even Iblis himself was not aware. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Impurity was hidden. In many, many people, maybe 99% of people, there are impurities, there are problems, mm. but they are hidden. Just needs something to trigger. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I use this example. You know, imagine you have a fountain or for example a pool, okay? If there is no wind and no one steers water. Mm. <coughs> water sure. looks very clean. Mm. Or if you go to sea, when there is no wind, even you can see the you know, ground. Yes? You can see the seabed. But if there are waves, if there is wind, and you know, water is, you know, moved, then you see all the dirts come up. You cannot see anything. Our soul is like this. I say about myself, not about you. But please, you say this about yourself. <laughs> Be fair. We are like this. We all have lots of dirts, but just, alhamdulillah, they are you know, somehow settled. Because we have not gone through crisis. If crisis comes, you see these nice people who smile, they become wolves. 
When there is electricity and traffic light, they wait behind the red light. But if the electricity goes away, no one has mercy. I'm not saying no one, but many people have no mercy. When the weather is cold, they stand in queue. But if it's very hot, and then you are in hurry, then you may try to bypass people. You don't want to stand in the queue. When someone is poor, it's difficult. So, these impurities which are in our heart, in the time of ease, they can remain hidden. But when God forbids a crisis happens, then you would see the same person does something that you cannot understand. Sometimes you see two people, you know, living together as a husband and wife for 20, 30 years, when they have issue, then you see they become like enemies. They really don't want, you know, the other person to have any comfort. They want to make life miserable for the other person. It's not that this person has changed now. This person was like this even before. But that enmity was not triggered. That, you know, quality of being wild was not triggered. It was there. You know, like a dog which is sleeping. <laughs> you know, Rumi says, <laughs> Naps chun ejdehast kei murdast. Az ghame bi aulati. You know, a person in the winter saw there was a nice stick. Uh -huh. He took the stick, went home, put the stick in the room. Uh -huh. Then, after some time, that stick attacked him. Uh -huh. Why? Because it was a snake. Oh, oh, yeah. Was frozen. Uh -huh. So it looked like a stick. Mm -hmm. So Rumi says, our nafs is like that snake. Nafs chun ejdehas, keimur daas. It's not dead. Don't think your nafs is dead. Don't say, Alhamdulillah, I have killed my soul. My nafs amare. No. As ghame bi alati afsur daas. Because it has no tools and means so is now passive in idle how many people who were fighting for liberation when they took power they became tyrants people who were calling for the rights of poor when they became you know powerful they became millionaires so naps is there just Waiting. When you have no power, it's easy to be, you know, talking about justice. Yeah. Imam Hussein alayhi salam says, Al-Nas abidu dunya wa deen la'ighun ala al-sinatihim fa'idha muhhesu bil-bala qalla al-dayyam People talk about religion, very nice, they give lectures, you know. But Iman is just something on their lips. <laughs> Just here, they speak. <coughs> but if they are tested <coughs> severely, then the people who are really faithful are very little. Mm -hmm. So, when there is no test, it's easy. But when a test comes, when a crisis comes, then you see those hidden dirts and impurities come up. Okay? You know, in Farsi, sometimes we say, uh, we have this, uh, you know, when two people, you know, quarrel with each other, uh, sometimes, you know, they say, uh, don't let my other face, which is like dog, to come. <laughs> you know, I say, Nazar, we are Sagam Darbiya. 
in Farsi they say like this, you know? Don't let my other face, don't look, think I am a very nice person. I have another face which is like dark. Don't let that come. This is what they say in Farsi. Father? Don't let. Nagzar. It means that I have two faces. One is nice. If you are nice with me, I am nice with you. If you are going to be like a dog, I have another face which is like dog. But there is, in many of these proverbs, there is a deep point you have to discover. You know, don't take these things easily. It means that I can be a nice person when situation is normal. But don't think I am always like this. But now the question is, which face is his real face? <laughs> when he is nice, is his real face? Or when he is like a dog, it's a real face? This is the question. Yes? No, you can't know a very, very serious problem of a sphere. Is there any practical way to get rid of this? Or at least to control it? Inshallah, we talk about it uh, as much as, of course, I know. But I just want first to highlight the significance of this asabiya, and at least we become awake. So you have to be very careful when you evaluate yourself or other people. You know, one of the things that we have in our hadith is. When you want to choose someone as a very intimate friend, don't rush. You can have friends with whom you laugh, you, you know, enjoy, that's fine. We call them ikhwanul mukashara. The people with whom you enjoy your time, you laugh at each other, you know, in a, in a smile, you know, nice. But if you want to have a very Don't rush. You have to see whether this person's relation with you would change with the change of conditions or would remain the same. For example, <coughs> now that he is poor, he is good with you. But if he is rich, would he remain the same? When he is unknown, he is good with you, but when he becomes famous, is he the same with you? So if you want to choose a friend with whom you may share your, some of your secrets, for example, those things which can be shared, someone that you can really feel united, you have to be careful. One of the things that help you to understand the realities of people is what? Traveling. Do you know why? Why when you travel you can know people? In Arabic there is an expression which says Fil asfare tu'rafu jawahir rajal In trips you can understand the substance of people. The surface is gold co coated. But what is inside? In trips. You know why? Because when you travel, this is very important. When you travel, unexpected things happen. People over time learn how to pretend that they are nice. He knows that from 9 to 5 in the office, I have to be nice. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Air condition is working, you know, my salary is paid, and I have security, so I'm nice. But when you travel, and then electricity is disconnected, for example, your passport is stolen, the food is late, then this is to see the real faces of people. Especially if you go to Hajj, because so many unexpected things happen. Then you can see the reality of people. Some people remain calm 
and patience. Some people get angry. Some people shout. Baba, you are haji. <laughs> people get tired as well. Sir. They get tired, exhausted, angry. To comprehend. And so, in, during Hajj, you can really understand the reality of people. So, people have maybe two levels of personality. One is what is on the surface and you see in ordinary encounters. What is hidden? And you can only know when you have been spending time with someone in different conditions or if you have insight, if you have basira. If you have basira, even from someone's nice smile, you understand how bad that person is. But not everyone has basira. So you have to be careful in your judgment, even about yourself. Don't be deceived by yourself also that I'm a nice person. Allah knows mm -hmm. how many problems are hidden in each of us. But one of the beautiful things in Islam is, okay, although people have problems, but let us keep the surface of society clean. When a person is deliberately or un not deliberately hiding his bad qualities, let that respect remain. That honor remains. Don't dig deep into the personality of people and then share it with other people. You know how bad is this person? <laughs> if we do like this, then the society becomes worse. This is why no one should talk about other people's sins or even about his own sins. <coughs> we should keep the surface clean and then move downwards. Oh, oh, oh. But if the surface is dirty, then we cannot move anywhere because we need fresh water. We need clean air. So let's at least have a little clean thing on the surface with which we can start talking to each other, having good relation, and then go down. But if you are satisfied with having just clean surface, you are deceiving yourself. Mm -hmm. Inshallah, we continue this discussion next week. Wa akhiru da'wana, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin.